You thought there was gonna be affordable GPUs? You thought wrong. EVGA's stolen GPUs finally appear and NVIDIA wants you to know that Intel and AMD are amazing. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And now we have new indication coming out showing that the RX 6500 XT, while AMD announced that it would have a $199 MSRP, doesn't mean anything because AAB partners are just setting whatever price they want, which I also want to talk about yesterday's episode of Hot News and all of the comments that I received with regards to the 6500 XT. A lot of you were defending ending a lot of the things that I said were wrong about the card, and I'm gonna point out why I, I really think I wasn't wrong in a lot of different areas after reading all of your arguments, but let's go ahead and talk about how none of it matters because this is not an affordable GPU in the first place because Asus unveils a European MSRP of 299 euro or roughly 330 US dollars, which likely will correlate to higher prices here on the other side of the pond as we've seen before when the prices are higher in Europe. There's no real reason for them to be more expensive over there than they are here. So expecting a $300 price availability for the RX 6500 XT is likely going to be the case, especially in the US with it being more expensive elsewhere in the world as we're seeing here from Asus. And while this is just one AIB partners pricing, other companies will likely price it the same. Asus is tough and dual brands aren't known as the most expensive GPUs out there. So the fact that this is the starting price for these cards is likely not boding well for it to being the $200 GPU that AMD made it seem like it was going to be, which honestly isn't all that shocking considering the fact that if you go to look at an RX 580 four gigabyte over on eBay, you can see they're selling between $200 and $250. And considering that those are cards that are five years old at this point and they're going for that much, the thought that a 6500 XT was gonna sell for $199 right now isn't really a realistic one. But now I wanna talk about the 6500 XT a little bit more. In the comments yesterday, there were plenty of responses is being like, hey, Brett, did you know that PCI Express 4.0 by four lanes is actually really good because it's PCI Express 3.0 by eight? And that's true. As long as you're running the 6500 XT in PCI Express 4.0, I actually think you're gonna be more than likely fine when it comes to its gaming performance. But a lot of you pointed out that like, our oh, GPU can't saturate PCI Express 3.0 eight times lanes, okay? That's, it's fine. But that's not the conversation that happens when the GPUs, you're not just saturating the PCI Express lane with everything that you're doing when it comes to gaming performance. You're also doing things like running out of VRAM buffer and then trying to send data across the PCI Express bus like it was proven with the RX 5500 XT, where if you had the four gigabyte model, it was actually heavily affected by being on PCI Express 3.0 instead of 4.0, whereas the eight gigabyte one was fine because it didn't have to deal with any VRAM buffer communication going across the PCI Express lane. And I want to remind you that the 5500 XT had twice the amount of PCI Express lanes. So this PCI Express 3.0 on the 5500 XT is twice as fast as it would be on the 6500 XT because you're only getting four lanes of PCI Express 3.0 if you're using anything besides a B550, an X570, or Intel's 11th and 12th gen setup. That's it. If you're on anything that's 10th gen Intel or prior, which is actually where a lot of the value lies when it comes to building mid-tier systems right now, if you wanna build a $500, $750 PC with the 6500 XT, picking up a 10100 or 10400 makes a lot of sense, but then you're getting an issue where you're running into PCI Express bottlenecks that are actually going to probably make it perform worse based on evidence that we have from other cards that were better than the 6500 XT. That's my whole point. Point. We've already seen how this plays out in the 5500 XT. It's not the GPU that's running out of space on the PCI Express bus, it's the memory buffer because it only has four gigabytes of VRAM, which the 6500 XT does. And then I just wanna call attention to the fact that a lot of you in yesterday's comments were like, what does it matter if it doesn't have H.264 encode or decode? Are you really using a budget GPU for that? What high horse are you on? A $199 GPU for the better part of a decade has supported this feature. It is being removed for no valid reason that AMD is disclosing. What are you gonna encode videos? Yes, I started this channel with an R9 270X, which was a $199 GPU. I encoded 
all of our videos using that GPU. I built this channel for the first two years on that graphics card. If you think a $200 GPU is so low end that you shouldn't be doing any real work on it, I don't know what to tell you. A lot of people can't afford $500 GPUs. Building a system between $500 and $700 that has a $200 GPU, but lacks functionality of a card that I bought over half a decade ago is honestly a really bad move by AMD. A lot of you were saying, oh, it's just a card that's not meant for miners. Yeah, that's fine. The four gigabytes of VRAM with the lack of memory bandwidth, I kind of understand that. And I understand the price of 199, 299, and I can grasp that in the current market. But what does not make sense and is worse for the consumer is the PCI Express bandwidth and the lack of encoding and decoding options. That is something that people who buy this class of GPU regularly use and not having it is a bad move. Building a budget PC where you're only running on PCI Express 3.0 by 4 bandwidth and you actually can't get H.264 encoding, that would make it so that you're getting a worse off experience than you otherwise could have if they had just included features that existed in the previous class of GPU. The 5500 XT had better specs than both of this. Anyways, that's the end of that brand. I understand the 6500 XT's memory amount, memory bandwidth, and price point. I do not understand PCI Express or the lack of encoding options as far as being a good choice for the end consumer. You cannot convince me that it was the right thing for AMD to do to get rid of those four people. Now, there might be a technical explanation of it that it was only meant to be a mobile GPU and therefore they could not implement this. But honestly, I think the better strategy still would have been to relaunch a 5500 XT with four gigabytes of VRAM. That would make more sense to me than what what they're doing with the 6500 XT. But in case you care about AMD's next generation of stuff, the Ryzen 7000 is starting to pop up in some benchmark naming, at least when it comes to the eight core and the 16 core GPUs, the 7950X and the 7800X appearing in some benchmarks, not a whole lot known. Performance, not really something to speculate about right now, besides the fact that, hey, and AMD says it's coming out and it looks like it is. And something that Intel hasn't said is coming out, but looks like it is, is the i5-12490F. This is a really strange CPU because it's like the 12400F, except for it has an increase in L3 cache, which makes it actually better than the 12400F, especially when it comes to preliminary Geekbench scores that are out there, to the tune of 10 to 15%, which is quite good, especially considering the fact that it's roughly an L3 cache advantage that's happening here. Intel not announcing this, but it appearing at retail in certain places. But Intel is saying that the DRM issues that were plaguing Alder Lake when it came to de nouveau DRM not working with Alder Lake, well, that has been fixed according to them, so in case that was something that was preventing you from upgrading 12th gen Intel, it's no longer an issue. But what might be an issue are these crypto prices. My goodness, Bitcoin down 1.7% on the day to be at 41,774. It had a really rough middle of the day to be below $40,000 for the first time that I've seen it in quite some many moons, below 40 grand, obviously peaking back up over that, but still down within the last 24 hours. Ethereum down 3.76% to be just over $3,000 again, having that same midday crater to be below three grand and Dogecoin down 6%, having a midday crater to be roughly below 14 cents. The meme stonk's not doing too well either. GameStop closing down 6.7% to be at 131.15 and AMC closing down 1% to be at 22.78. And while we're talking about memes, let's keep on on the metaverse. It's coming out from analysts that Apple's new mixed reality headset that they're planning to launch better not be used for no gosh dang metaverse because uh uh, this is not an all day device for you to get lost in and immersed into yourself, okay? This is not meant for you to fulfill your second life fantasies of things that existed 10 years ago, but now are available in VR. So we think they're new and novel, but in reality, we used to make fun of people who played second life. In fact, there was a whole skit on the office dedicated to how weird Dwight Schrute's life was because he played second life. Anyways, the report saying that Apple is likely not going to focus on it because they don't actually think that this device should be used for that moving forward. And the device that should be used for science moving forward 
Goddard, the James Webb Space Telescope, fully deployed. It's going on its way out to the L2 orbital plane to make it so that it can actually detect things in IR. There's also reports coming out that it has significantly more fuel than it needs to complete its 10 year mission. And so the James Webb Space Telescope, everything seems to be going well. Now we just need it to get out to the L2 orbital plane. There just has to be some configuring of the cameras to make sure everything's working properly. And then roughly around July, we should start seeing our first actual images from the James Webb Space Telescope. I'm excited for that. What people shouldn't be excited for is E3 because it's it's dead, it's digital only, and likely will be just gone from now on. Because even before COVID, E3 wasn't really doing a whole lot and people were already starting to pull out of it because it wasn't as big as it once was. And while E3 is going digital only, Tesla wants you to go digital only when it comes to your driving style and the full self-driving beta getting a new mode known as aggressive, which does such illegal things as uh, rolling stops and making it so that it won't fully stop at stoplights, but also doing things like not exiting passing lanes, which is also sometimes illegal, depending on where you are in the US. Obviously, this is a US only full self-driving beta rollout. I know that European countries have actually likely in some cases more strict laws than what we have in the US, but in still in some states, that is an illegal motion to just stay in the passing lane even after you've completed your passing motion. Rolling stops also somewhat illegal. Elon Musk not going to pay your tickets, but it'll make it so that you get there ever so slightly faster, as long as you don't get pulled over. And take two is pulling over Zynga and saying, hey, we'll give you $13 billion if you let us acquire you. Zynga saying, hey, yeah, Zynga, in case you're not familiar, is behind mobile games such as Farmville and, and the like. This is obviously a huge deal considering the fact that Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax, only got bought for $7.5 billion, all right? All of those games you really love, like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout, all right? Those are worth roughly half of what Farmville is, friends. You think gaming are these AAA experiences where you have to buy a console? No, it's that piddly crap you play on your phone while you're pooping, okay? That's where the real money in gaming is, all right? It's your 70 year old grandmother asking you for tomatoes. That's where the real gaming money lies and where real money lies when it comes to graphics cards is paying $0 for them and then selling them at full price. We reported this on a previous episode of Hot News that EVGA had a truck of their GPU stolen back in November and they were asking for and information with regards to where these GPUs are. And it turns out they have now started to pop up at a retail shop in Vietnam with several people posting in a Vietnamese gaming group on Facebook saying things like, hey, I bought my GPU from this retail company. And then when I went to go register it, uh, EVGA says it's on the banned list. And so it turns out that a lot of the GPUs may have made their ways overseas. And while you can't get any of Nvidia's GPUs right now, they still really, really want themselves to get our and so there's reports coming out of the legal strategy and the arguments they're making towards actually purchasing ARM with some of them being such as, hey, when you say that if we buy ARM, the industry is going to get messed up, that disparages Intel, AMD and hundreds of Risk Five supporters as forever unable to compete with ARM. All right. That is disgusting. How dare you insinuate that Intel and AMD aren't capable of beating ARM? All right. They're industry leaders, not also RANs. OK, NVIDIA has chosen x86, Ford's DGX and Super. OK, Intel and AMD's CPUs are not going anywhere and they will compete with ARM for the foreseeable future, okay? So while the argument isn't necessarily that AMD and Intel can't compete with ARM, one of the arguments that I think a lot of people have been making around this is just, hey, you're gonna get rid of ARM for a lot of people. Like some people wanna use this, like, Apple, where are they gonna go? Or just, you know, a lot of smaller vendors, what are they gonna do? Oh, you think Intel and AMD suck? Oh, what's wrong with you, okay? We might get rid of ARM, but you'll have other choices. That's what it comes across as to me, I don't know. But also Nvidia saying that in the event of the purchase of ARM, they are saying that they did not approach SoftBank to purchase them, but rather SoftBank approached them, which I would speculate is them trying to posture it as, hey, listen, this was forced upon us. We are not trying to be megalomaniacal right here, okay? Hey, somebody asked us if we wanted to spend $40 billion. We did not say, hey, we want to buy this company because we can actually take over the world. It was the other way around, okay? And just other arguments such as the fact that this won't impact console sales because AMD is already doing all the console SOC. So, hey, listen, Nvidia buying ARM is fine because there's other competition out there and th we just, let's focus on Intel and AMD. Let's just talk about them. Let's not talk about the fact that we're gonna quash everybody who's using ARM right now. Let's just not conversate about that or how we're gonna upcharge everything. Let's just shh, 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 shh. 
It's a good deal. It's free real estate. And my free real estate of my brain is done because I went on several rants in this episode of Hot News. Let me know what you thought of anything and everything I talked about down below. I'll see you tomorrow for Hot News, Tech News, Breakfast thing that we do here tomorrow. Tomorrow, goodbye.